Hello to all the YouTube people out there tonight on the Late Night Tool Catechism. We're here with Mrs. J, the world's best union apprentice carpenter. And uh, the past couple of days we assembled her uh, saw stop. It's a 10 inch, the contractor saw version, the CNS 175. Uh, we assembled it. We got all the oil off the surface of the table and this is going to be the very first cut so i'm sure everyone has seen the hot dog videos where they bring a piece of wood in contact the blade, uh, the brake mechanism inside there hits, the blade stops, drops down, and then you just have a small nick on your finger. We're not going to do that here. Uh, everyone has seen that, and we don't want to unnecessarily pay for a braking mechanism. Uh, we'll go over the, I don't know if I can say quirks and features, that's Doug DeMero's uh, spiel. If you like cars, find Doug. His videos are fantastic. We're going to start at the top here. It did come with the uh, stamp steel uh, extension wings, and she decided she wanted the, the weight. Well, it just looks better to have the cast, too, but it gives you a heavier table saw, dampens vibration. Uh, it's not a cheap upgrade, but I feel that is very much worth it. Uh, if you notice, this is a modern table saw, so you have the rifing knife right here. This is designed to prevent kickback. Uh, recently, uh, one of the influencers, uh, the Wooden Maven, forgot to put hers back on. Did a little video where she actually did get some kickback. It can hurt you very seriously. So uh, these, the modern rifing knives work very well. Uh, some people aren't accustomed to it. They want to take it out. Uh, please don't do that. It's a very, very good safety feature. Uh, the saw stock comes with actually a pretty nice uh, miter gauge. I like it. It's got a pin here that uh, goes to your stops. Your stops are adjustable. They are at, uh, we got one at zero and 45. Very nice setup. Uh, I've always had delta table saws, so this is something new and interesting to me to remove your throat plate. Uh, you bring up this lock and then work it out like that. Uh, these guys hook in the back here and here and then you have uh, an actual locking mechanism that locks that guy back down into place. I'll note that I have the saw unplugged so uh, as I'm reaching here in here you can see down in here this guy right there that is the braking cartridge that uh, uh, the brains of the operation are over there is just a really neat setup also you see in here is this lever. Uh, you pull this towards you, like so. And if for some reason you would need to, your rifing knife comes out like that. But I highly recommend you use that guy. Uh, very nice at preventing pinching and potential kickback. Mrs. J bought this saw with the standard rip fence. It's a nice little setup. Uh, has extruded aluminum rails, rail on the front. Uh, uh, just basically a piece of angle iron in the back. There we go, like that. And like that, locks into place with a nice big handle on the front, uh, not unlike uh, a Unifence or 
a Beesmeyer. Very when you're nice. not using a rip fence. There's a nice set of hooks that come with this guy. So it's at hand, but out of the way. Also, your miter gauge, they've got nice hooks. So everything is close at hand, ready to use, but not in your way. So here we are on what would be the left side if you're standing in a position to push wood through the saw. Comes with a couple of nice built-in hooks. They send along a snazzy uh, plastic push stick. They also have instructions in the owner's manual to make your own. Um, and then the wrench is necessary for blade change. Here is one of the really neat things on this saw. You have a, a little control panel um, with your saw. You have a main power switch right here that you turn on. And then you see you have a green light indicating that the saw is ready to go. Uh, there is a red light here that gives you uh, multiple different problem codes. Look in your owner's manual and it gives you a full explanation of how, how to diagnose anything that might be funny with your saw. One interesting thing about this saw is if you have the power on but you don't have the saw running, uh, I don't recommend doing this, but you can if you touch the blade. The system recognizes it and says, hey, you better not start this saw. There's something touching that blade. And then to start the saw, you just grab your paddle, give a little pull. And shut it down. Viola. And if you're going to be doing some cutting of uh, aluminum, perhaps, or wet treated lumber, there's a key uh, that you turn to put it into uh, bypass mode where the system uh, will not work. And if you do contact the blade, uh, it will uh, hurt. So don't do that. So out front here we've got elevation wheel. Uh, has a nice, the crank has a nice feel with the little raised bars. And to lock it in place, just your standard twist lock there. Uh, clockwise lock, counterclockwise unlock, uh, basic tilt scale up to 45 degrees uh, with your little indicator there on the side. Uh, this is your tilt crank again. Standard spinner knobby in the middle to lock it into place. And then something really that I think is well thought out is their mobile base that they build in to this saw. You just push down on this nice padded lever it moves your wheels down and you are now mobile uh, to disengage it it's a nice nice well thought out setup so around the back side like uh, most contractor saws have been forever uh, you got the motor hanging off the back of the saw uh, it's uh, one and three quarter horse is what they rated at 60 hertz. You can run the motor at 120 or 240, depending on what you want to do in your uh, workshop. Uh, it'll draw 14 amps at 120, seven amps at 240. Uh, the setup here to hold the motors a little reminiscent of uh, the sort of mount that craftsman saws used to use. The trunnions that hold this saw together, front and back, are uh, really very substantial. It's, it's very impressive. We'll 
Uh, we'll take a look underneath now. Uh, one thing I should have gone over quickly, they have a nice belt guard and they use a, a multi-rib belt that runs very, very smoothly. Now, if you stick your head underneath this contractor saw, uh, you're not going to see a lot. The tilt adjust mechanism is right up here, but your view is obscured because they have this very nice oh, dust collection hood. Uh, you just hook up a standard four inch hose. So I'm not really going into the assembly or adjustment. We just kind of did kind of an overview, but I do want to note that the manuals uh, that they have with these saws are very comprehensive and assembly uh, if you do decide you want this saw and you want to a saw stop sends these incredible laminated guides they're they're really nice and all of the fasteners come in these uh, they look like kind of like uh, advent calendars and is numbered and corresponds uh, from the these laminated jobbies it's uh, it's really nice really very nice it's a it's a very solid saw uh, they really want uh, the end user experience to go well I'm impressed uh, when I sold Delta stuff and would assemble that you you did not you did not have this uh, saw stop is doing a very nice job and it's a very nice saw uh, I would recommend it it's uh, it's good thank you for watching like follow all the good stuff and we'll talk to you later